Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to one of many. Today's the beginning of AOC or Advent of Code, a coding challenge that happens every year where you, whether a beginner or an expert coder, can learn something new. Now, I am definitely the former of those two things, but I like a challenge. So to challenge myself even further than I normally do, I'll be selecting the language every day to use in Advent of Code from this wheel here. If I complete the challenge in the first try, I will get to choose what I replace that language with, choosing a language probably that I already know. If I don't get the challenge done on the first try, chat will choose the language in a poll. Now I've just made that rule up on the spot. I'm very likely going to regret that rule. But anyway, here we go chat. So we have a couple uh, couple options here. We got, you know, the, the basic ones, we got like Python, we've got JS, uh, we got PHP floating around in there. We got C, C++ a few times, Rust, Go, Go a few times. Um, we're, we're using languages to begin with that I myself am fairly comfortable with. But as things start to go a little haywire, uh, chat may begin to choose languages that are, are not very good. Maybe they'll get some, some visual basic in there, some visual C sharp, and we'll see where it goes. So let's spin the wheel and see where we're going on AOC day one. Let's begin. Come on, Python. C, C++. Dear God, okay. C++, so what are my thoughts on C++? It's a language that was meant to just be C with classes, but has since gone a little overboard, I think, and what it's trying to do is trying to now be like a Rust clone. Um, well, uh, okay, ladies and gentlemen, C++, AOC day one, let's begin. So a couple of things to think about here. Um, I wanna talk about the rules of AOC real quick. You know, I really think that AOC is a great place for anybody who has a lot or no, or just any range of programming experience to learn about programming. That being said, there are some ethics that are associated with advent of code. First of all, the fact that I'm even streaming right now is only allowed uh, because the leaderboard that exists has filled up to 100. So every day when a challenge goes live, uh, there is a global leaderboard that is up to the 100 top scoring people. So I will not be streaming until the leaderboard is populated. But that being said, let's dive into the challenge for AOC day one. I think step one is to make sure that I actually have GC, G++ installed. I did, thank God. Okay, that would've been really embarrassing. It's like, oh, you're gonna code in C++? Cool, you don't even have the compiler installed. If you're not familiar with like what advent of code is, again, it's a coding challenge, but it's all story driven. So typically every year, Santa's elves have been caught in some kind of predicament and advent of code is meant, you know, it's a story where we write code to help them progress in, in their issues. Let's read the story today for Advent of Code Day 1. Day 1, trebuchet. Something is wrong with the global snow production. They've used stars to mark the top 50 locations that are likely to be having problems. You've been doing this long enough to know that to restore snow operations, you'll need to check all 50 stars by December 25th. Collect the stars by solving puzzles. Two puzzles will be made available on each day of the advent calendar. The second puzzle is unlocked when you complete the first. You can solve the one star solution, but then when you solve your one star solution, it unlocks a two star solution, and that gives you access to a, maybe a, an input to your program that's a little more complicated that accounts for more edge cases that a new programmer may not get, but an experienced programmer may get. So each puzzle grants one star, and then that one star unlocks a two star solution. You're trying to ask why they can't just use a weather machine, not powerful enough they say, and where they're sending you, the sky they say, and why your map looks mostly blank, you sure ask a lot of questions they say. And hang on, did you just say the sky? Of course, where do you think the snow comes from? And this is where trebuchet is probably uh, coming into play. When you realize that the elves are already loading you into a trebuchet, please hold still, we need to strap you in. Oh dear God, okay. As they're making the final adjustments, they discover that their calibration document, your puzzle input, okay, so again, advent of code, right? What they, ha what they do typically is they give you some kind of text as your puzzle input, and then your program has to do something to it and output the proper output, and that's the solution to your problem. So as they're making the final adjustments, they discover that their calibration document, your puzzle input, has been amended by a very young elf who apparently was just excited to show off their art skills. Oh dear God. Okay, so we are uh, we are going into a trebuchet being calibrated by a young elf. Wonderful. The newly improved calibration document consists of lines of text. Each line originally contained a specific calibration value that the elves now need to recover. On each line, the calibration value can be found by combining the first digit and the last digit in that order to form a single two-digit number. Okay, so one, two, 
three, eight, two, five, seven. Uh, okay, we got to figure out how to account for that too. Oh, it's seven, seven here. Okay, so first and last are always two. Okay, so we just walk left to right, easy. In this example, the calibration values uh, of these four lines are one, two, three, eight, one, five, seven, seven. Yep. Uh, and adding these together produces one, four, two. Consider your entire calibration document. What is the sum of all the calibration values? Okay, so let's do this real quick. So this is pretty simple. So the calibration values are going to be this puzzle input. We're gonna download this real quick. Boom, go like that, great. So then we'll do, we'll do a make file, keep it simple real quick. Uh, default G++ uh, solution.c++ tag O solution, we'll run the solution. I learned C++ in like 2010. So I'm probably using the wrong version of C++. Well, first of all, let's get, let's just get the, the main prototype going. Int main, int argc, care star, pointer, argv. Um, and then if argc not equals two, we'll do God standard C out. Actually, no, there's standard printf now, right? Standard printf. The thing is I could do C standard IO but I don't want to use standard IO because then I'm just writing C and that like defeats, it defeats the purpose. So we'll do standard IO stuff for printing because I hate, I fucking hate C out. I think the C out operators with the carrots and stuff. Yeah, like Lucas is talking about, it makes no sense to me. I can't, I can't stand it. Uh, we'll do printf usage percent S and then we'll do file name. Otherwise, dude, <laughs> I'm so bad at this language. So the whole point is we have to create some sum, right? So unsigned is you went six uh, 32t a type in c plus plus yeah sum equals zero and don't forget so what we have to do is iterate over the file for every line walk the line left walk the line right cast those to an integer add them to the sum right so we'll say string line while get line from input file i have to open it first uh, uh, input file my file is equal to argv1 good if not input file dot is open print uh, printf failed to open input file wonderful so what we're gonna do right now is just test this real quick this is like basic did the file open type shit and then also input file dot close be be good programmers close your files oh dear god there is so much wrong with this oh standard if stream standard string okay cool okay so we build it good solution boom we'll do input file okay so we run this and we get no s no messages which means that it opened the file perfect okay so we're good while get line from the input file into the line buffer what we're gonna do right now is just printf the line right uh what is it line dot cster Perfect. So this will print every line. Awesome. So now we have a way that we can iteratively check every line in the code and then go walk left, walk right, get the digit. And then there we go. We're cooking with elf grease, I think is what the kids would say. We're cooking with. So now we have to do is create a leftmost equals zero. Now we're going to do is we're going to walk left. We're going to walk right. Ooh. Okay. So there's, we can, how can we do this? in one swoop. Well, let's do it in two swoops and see if we can figure out how to do it in one swoop. Because what, what we could do essentially have two passes where the first pass goes like this and hits the first digit. And then the second pass goes like this and hits like the first digit from the right. But then complexity wise, we're doing like O of two N and there's gotta be a way we can do this in O of N. When we walk in a one pass, we'll walk it until we hit the first digit. That is the leftmost digit. And then we'll keep counting digits until we get to the last one so yeah if when we hit leftmost left and rightmost are that digit and then when we keep going to the right yeah okay perfect this is we got this so so first of all if you notice from the input none of the digits are negative so this can be our placeholder for a not set value right we're doing this in one pass guys we're doing this in in one pass this is uh this is pretty good so first of all, we're gonna print the line and then we're gonna do is we're gonna say one pass O of N. I have to iterate over the line, right? Uh, while I is less than line dot length, uh, I plus plus. If is digit um, stir of N, we're just gonna have it print percent C, we'll do stir of N. Line of I, I and N, 
classic mix up. So cool. We iterate over the string for every line and we print every digit. So here it's nine, eight, six. Here we find a four, a four, a five, a seven, and a seven. Wonderful. So what we're gonna do now, when we enter the logic, there is a digit. If leftmost equals negative one, meaning we haven't found the leftmost yet, leftmost equals line of i, and we're gonna do a to i, right? This converts to an actual number. And then we're gonna do rightmost equals a to i, line of i as well. Rightmost equals a to i. Although I'm realizing now, no, this is fine. Go like this. So that means we found both the digits. So we're gonna print at the end of every line, printf, um, percent d, percent d, is the digit it's going to be leftmost rightmost invalid conversion from allocator character to constant care pointer okay so we got to figure out how to convert to c plus plus a to i is a a c ism it c plus plus is not happy with me so let's do we're just gonna do it the simple way guys this is this is literally how you down convert a character to its ascii value ready boom good solution input so let's let's talk through this right make sure we have all of our good inputs here uh, four, nine, 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 eight, 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 six, 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 four, seven, four, seven, four, 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 five, six, five, six. You went 32 T total is equal to leftmost times 10 plus rightmost. And then sum plus equals total. And then at the end of all this, we'll print sum is equal to, okay. Solution input less, um, go to the end. Okay, so in theory, I think my logic is sound. My sum is five, three, 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 four. I'm really trying to think through any edge cases. Here we go, guys. <clears throat> Having a code day one. Answer five, three, three, four. Woo! Got the right answer. You are one gold star closer. <laughs> Claps and chat, everybody. Claps and chat. What does that mean? What does that mean? C++ off the list, and I'm gonna replace it with, I really wanna do more Rust, so we're gonna add uh, Rust here. Boom, baby. Rust, it's gonna be Rust. The easy one is part one most of the time, and then part two is part two. It's, it's a harder version of the first problem, so let's go check it out. Calculation isn't quite right. It looks like some of the digits are actually spelled out with letters. Oh, dear God. Okay. Oh my God, Z18. So does that mean that one is the leftmost and that eight is the rightmost? So that'd be... <sighs> Again, I can't tell if this is like the C++ way to do it, but I want to do it this way. I got the first part. Okay, hold on. I got the first part done in C++, guys. I, I don't feel bad doing it this way. So what I'm going to do is we're going to do type def, an anonymous structure, uh, a lookup T, basically a standard string, stir, and an int i. Lookup t g table is equal to to like standard stirring of one one. I'm I'm literally messing up basic C syntax. No way that compiles. Okay, class in chat. So I'm effectively creating a lookup table, and I'm going to iterate over the lookup table and compare the first value to the number. Okay, so now we need to create a function to essentially compare. This is making my algorithm so complicated though, dude. Make a function effectively that says, you went 32T match. It'll take a or int i equals zero, i less than nine. If lookup t of i dot stir dot compare, if not, uh, compare it to the slice, turn lookup t of i dot num otherwise return negative one right so we're walking the lookup table we're comparing the slice to every string it's gonna make us the algorithm so slow though but i don't think i care honestly good again we're just testing right where's my function yeah it's not lookup t it's g table ah so got a stir match five beautiful three so this should have been the leftmost Oh, 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 it's it's not doing a full stir compare. I mean, it, it is doing a full stir compare, but it has to do a stir end compare. So, bro, okay, no, 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 I'm not dealing with this. We're, we're gonna do, <laughs> if not stir end compare, 
g table of i dot stir dot c stir to g table uh, no 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 slice dot c stir and the length is g table of i dot stir dot length i ain't dealing <clears throat> i'm not dealing with that c plus nonsense Fuck. there we go okay we're finally getting some matches here dude holy shit okay so now we have to do is once this matches just literally copy this code but we're going to change the logic a little bit so if leftmost equals negative one actually all that's going to happen in here so if it's not equal to negative one go like this go like that boom cool um and it's not going to be this it's going to be match them four nine perfect eight nine perfect okay i think we're good ladies and gents drum roll in chat and we get a drum roll everyone do a little bit of this at your house wherever you're at maybe you're on the toilet i don't know um here we go no way it's done i got it Woo! let's go anticlimactic <gasps> clap the chat yes first day aoc randomly selected by my wheel back here c plus plus at the beginning the solution to the first part was definitely c plus plus towards the end here i was getting a little stressed i was getting a little sweaty i may have implemented a c like solution where i create what's most likely a c style lookup table and then I do definitely a C style stir compare. This is what we're doing for the next 25 days. I'm getting up at five in the morning. I'm gonna get on that wheel. I'm gonna spin it. We're gonna choose a language. I got a lot of options here. We got Rust, we got Go, we got Zig, we got Nim, we got Odin. A lot of these languages that I've coded in but have little experience in. If I get it wrong on the first try, chat gets to erase that board and put on something a little more spicy. Maybe it's COBOL, maybe it's Brainfuck, maybe it's Elixir. But if you enjoyed this video, go watch me solve day two in the next video, and I'll see you guys there. Take care.